we are here to bring you everything and anything surrounding Porsche. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron. And this is P Car Talk. Welcome to another episode, P Car Talk. Uh, we're here on location at Mike and Sharon's house for a release for Heart and Media Group. Um, did a little uh, documentary today for Mark Probanek. He's our guest today. If you don't know who Mark is, follow him on Instagram. He's got a ton of followers. Um, huge in the 356 community. He's Mr. Adventure. This guy is everywhere. He's always getting that car dirty. Um, that's what it's about. That's what we're about. Um, get out there and drive, right? Uh, the old Magnus cliche. Um, but uh, we're here recording, and he's our special guest today. Um, and I'm Mike. And I'm Aaron. And we got Mark Probanek. What's up, Mark? How y'all doing? Thanks for having me on. Hey, we're doing well, man. Thanks for joining us and uh, coming down from Jacksonville down to Tampa and visiting us. I know you're all over the state, so you're kind of a traveling gypsy as is. So I can't say this is your second home, but you do come to uh, Tampa often, right, for Bully Brigade and mm-hmm. some other type of things. And you have a lot of friends down this way as well, right? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit towards the end of it, you know, the purpose of why you're actually here and the release party, and we'll get into all that. But let's give everybody a little bit of background about who Mark is and what Mark's ethos is and what he kind of does with himself, um, you know, with a car and how that connects to his life and that, how that's a bloodline into his, like who he is as a person. So, um, let's go ahead and get started just for, for, for people for a little bit of background, because we all know who you are in the per- Porsche community, but there's a lot of people like globally, it might not know who you are. Mm-hmm. So like, where did your love for Porsche originally start from? Uh, yeah. So I grew up in Europe. And when uh, we moved back to the U.S., uh, we lived close to Watkins Glen, and my father worked for an automotive company, and so he would take me to the IMSA races. So, you know, that was... That's a good start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful part of the country. A lot of great teams came through. This is early 80s, and uh, so that's when I saw my first Porsches. I mean, growing up in the Netherlands, saw a lot of German cars, had a little green... It's like a Viper green matchbox or Hot Wheels. I uh-huh. remember that as a kid, but Porsche never really caught my eye until going to the Glen as a kid. And I remember this, it was a penthouse, I don't know if they're playmates, whatever. She was giving t-shirts out okay. in the pits I can see or the where garages. Be, I could see where that made yeah, a memorable yeah, impression yeah, on you. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> this is a Watkins Glen, and I don't know if it was a 935 uh, that was sponsored by Penthouse. I don't know if that's when I had the Adam Carolla car. Yeah, yeah, I think so, around that time frame. Hawaiian Tropic. What, yeah. I'm not sure exactly. That what, livery changed a gazillion times on that car. I think it was Apple livery as well yeah. on that car at one point as well. I mean, right. it, it's had a lot of livery on that car. So you know, that was kind of my introduction to Porsche. And, uh, you know, my first car was a BMW. I've always, uh, I took German in school. Mm-hmm. So like my nice. ties to Europe. Deep. Deep. Yeah. And, uh, as a kid touring Europe and all that. So when we moved back to the U S and seeing those red races, um, cr- fast forward a little bit, I graduated high school and I came down to play golf at Stetson university. And, um, Daytona Speedway is 30 miles up the road. Mm-hmm. At that point, um, I hadn't reconnected with road racing. It wasn't I bought a 1993? No, in 1993, I bought a 1965 Volkswagen Camper. And I would okay. Take surfing in New Smyrna and so on and so forth. Nice. Ended up graduating college, moving to West Palm. No space for extra cars. Finished my master's degree, moved to Jacksonville. Okay. Six miles from where Brumos was. Yep. And. Nice. You know, back then, you've got a bus mic. So yep. back in the mid to late 90s, even the early 2000s, buses, you could lower them, but it was a rough ride. They, oh, weren't, yeah. they weren't really fast. Mm-hmm. So a friend of mine named Panama Mike owned a shop, and he built a, a Porsche bus with a six-cylinder, five-speed gearbox. Oh, very Ooh. cool. And his shop had Porsches, uh-huh. uh, 944s, 914s. He built a limo bus. The point is, I went to him that, hey, we've got this bus connection. Your mm-hmm. 97, or he calls it the 913 bus. Yeah. Roll cage, custom. Like, Damn, he's like, got a roll serious? cage in his bus? 940, <laughs> 914, six fender flares. Wow. And he's kind of dropped off the grid the last few years. He closed his shop probably 10 years ago. But he had a connection to Porsche, and I didn't know a whole lot about them. I knew Brumos was in town, but mm-hmm. even our newspaper didn't even say a whole lot about a Br- Brumos. We'd hear about NASCAR because Daytona's like 100 miles away. Yeah, like, that's true. That would yeah. probably, you know, monopolize the whole race scene there. Yeah, so 
um, I went to him one day and I was like, man, I, I really, um, I want to go faster than like 60, 65 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, my, I, I don't know where my, I caught my eye on 356s. It was kind of the same vintage as the early buses, right? So mm-hmm. 50s, early 60s, similar concept with the flat four, you know, like the wheel bearings are the same and there's some parts, yeah. spindles that can be swapped So it was, out. there was, fami- you know, you were familiar with that stuff, so right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly it. And, um, and the nostalgia of driving a 356 or looking at it, it's, you know, we're sitting in an Airstream and I look to my left and outside I've got two 356s. Yeah. And then, and then a bus. bus. Yeah, yeah, a bus and sitting I'm out like, there. I'm, to me, the like, I'm in heaven right now. I'm in an Airstream. Then there's 356s. And he's like, am I dead? Can I just live this day every day? Yeah, like, <laughs> so you've got a split window bus. I've mm-hmm. got a split window bus. And I'm like, what better complements it to me, for me, mm-hmm. is to have a 356 of the same, same kind of generation as a split window bus. Yeah. And so I, he, my friend Mike, his friend worked on the car. Okay. And the guy was a school teacher had a stroke and so he couldn't drive so eventually after four months i convinced him that i would be a next good caretaker. good candidate yeah. for the bus yeah i would yeah. take care of it for you yeah and so and this is 1990 it was fall of 97 maybe early 98 and um this car my car was an out early outlaw from the 70s it had a at the time a volkswagen two liter engine it had those wide five fuchs okay nerf bars no oh, badging wow. wrong seats like from a triumph or something uh-huh the the door handles were painted over it had like a modern car mirror stuck to the glass and one day it <laughs> fell off and it ch- chipped the inside of the windshield oh my god like back then the internet i don't even no, like the Samba was VW Planet maybe in 99. Like, you, it's yeah. nowhere near what it the, is. The yeah, it was the infancy of, yeah. like, good luck finding something, essentially, right? right? Right, and even though Brumos is right down the street, I went in there one day to buy some parts. Yeah. And they kind of laughed at me. Yeah, like you were a three-headed monster or yeah. something. You're like, where do you want me to get this from, man? Yeah. Like, they have the race shop, and the collection probably has several 356s, but they're not stocking parts. They, they're ordering it for mm-hmm. when yeah. they need it. And I was kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that, that, you know, the introduction was from Watkins Glen, and I bought the car in 98. Yeah. And at that point, I started to get back into road racing, realizing I'd seen the cars at the Glen, and I'd heard of Peter Gregg and Hurley Haywood. But I, going to college for four years, right down the street, I never yeah. went to the Rolex 24. And so I started getting back into it, and I started going, and none of my friends... Mm-hmm. would go for one reason or another I don't care yeah. kids or whatever but uh-huh. so I started going by myself and then um, you know learning more about the history of Brumos and just uh, blown away with the success that they've had and yeah um, how they do things you know made in Jacksonville and Peter Perfect and Hurley's history exactly and, and just doing things how they did things the right way so that's pretty awesome, though, because, I mean, that's pretty courageous of you to, like, go out there and you're just like, okay, screw it. You guys don't want to freaking come with me. I'll just go by myself because I enjoy this. And then, like you said, you kind of were like a, a trailblazer at that time in the sense of your own friend group, right? Right. Like, yeah. you kind of paved the way and you're like, well, I'm going to this and you can come with you if you want. You know, and maybe, like you said, over time, people started going with you. And now there's a big group. You have yep. your own little group, and you've been camping in the same site, which a lot of people don't know, but obviously I do know because we're close. But you have your little corner that you guys always camp out, and you've been doing it for years, mm-hmm. and your group has gotten bigger and bigger, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. so, you know, with the bus, uh, you can camp in them. You can haul firewood in them. And so, uh, you know, I started with the Porsche, but then my friends that had buses, I finally convinced them to come along. And it just started with one friend and then two friends, and then it kind of grew. And um, right about when uh, they were doing the When Brumos and Doors film, uh, I don't know if that was 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. I think that was the year Andy, Andrew Davis and Lee Keen um, were racing the car. And it might have been the year before Patrick Dempsey raced the Black 58 okay. Brumos mm-hmm. car. Yeah, yeah. But we, so um, I have this orange bus, and so I did a mock logo uh, like the 914 or early 911 that Peter Gregg and Hurley yeah. drove. So I put a 59. I did washable paint. I did the Porsche Audi on the sign. did race flags. I put mm-hmm. Brundage Porsche because I didn't want to 
make yeah. anybody upset yeah. that brumos yeah and i put the old main street address and so i put it washable paint because if it looks stupid i'd wash it off or if somebody said yeah. something and wash right it yeah off. exactly but everyone liked it so i washed it off and i redid it and then my friend robert kennedy his dad was the parts manager at brumos for 50 years i didn't know robert's dad oh, wow. was a parts manager there for that long buddy kennedy his I did entire not. career what's up robert I yeah. love that guy. I had no idea. That's yeah. awesome. So, See, this is why we do this stuff. Exactly. So Ro- <laughs> Robert's got that dove blue double door panel slammed on Fuchs, and he did. Um, I, I don't know if he got with Don Leatherwood. He got with somebody who does the um, design work for uh-huh. the race cars. And okay. They did the roof in the red, white, and blue, and he put the fifty nine yeah. on the nose. I saw that too. Yeah. And then my friend David Pecumer had uh, still has it. It's like a sixty five Weekender, mm-hmm. and he did the similar red white and blue racing stripes on it so we had our three buses during the filming of this okay. film and we met um like fraser spower and jim goodlett and um you know it's just really cool to be part of uh, the brumos family mm-hmm. and all the buses and again going from me by myself in the 356 or taking one of my buses you know we, we'll put like boards on the roof so we can sit above yeah get a oh, that's good, cool yeah and watch the race right perch and there's yeah. that old you ever see that old photo of the 15 window it says i think it says brundage volkswagen it's a chestnut brown ceiling wax red and they've got this roof full roof rack with an umbrella on it there's these three guys it's black and white uh-huh. and i haven't seen that it. picture it's floating mm-hmm. around on the, on the samba okay and um I was like, man, that's what we need to do with our buses to watch the race. Yeah. You're like, this is a great idea. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what better way to do it? Uh-huh. And so throughout the years, um, so from 98 to present time, it's what, 2019 now, I kind of alternate between my bus, split window bus, uh-huh. or, or my Porsche. And I'd uh, say so probably the last four years or so, I've been driving the Porsche more. Mm-hmm. I've, um, but like my core group that we that we're with at the racetrack um, most <laughs> all of us table <laughs> table malfunction <laughs> or fine. <laughs> we all own split window buses, and a few of us are luck- fortunate enough to own either three fifty sixes or um, mm-hmm. like nine eleven SCs or Carreras. Yeah, stuff yeah, like that. yeah. That's awesome. So let's get into a little bit of like, because uh, obviously I think a lot of people that do know you and know you pretty well know that you travel long distances or even short distances you like to go on either with like a weekend adventure or if you do have some time away from work you go on the longer adventure um talk to us a little bit about how that kind of stemmed and did that kind of start with like almost kind of like you just going out on your own to the brumos races or i mean not the brumos races but when you went to the 24 rolex and you're like you know what i'm gonna just go do this even if no one wants to go with me because i just want to go explore like can you talk about like how that kind of happened and that kind of became not necessarily your personality because it's always been you, but like, how did that come to define what you do and like how you look at everything in life? Yeah. yeah, And I look back at my childhood and, you know, growing up in the Netherlands and I really attribute it to that. And my parents, every weekend, my mom was a career librarian. My dad was in corporate finance and accounting, but every weekend they took us to every battlefield art museum all the history everything yeah. and throughout europe europe is so small compared to america it's and you so s- easy to travel oh, just the castles uh, the art museums and so to me i think it really came from that and appreciation appreciating art and design and mm-hmm. history and so when i do road trips you know i I've, i'd like to say I'd, I'd like to take the back roads because i want to see like 95 is built what, what what was the main thoroughfare before i-95 it was us1 what what was before that and it was the old dixie highway mm-hmm. and so i'm look i'm always searching out like cool routes cool things and now with i've always been into photography i won't say i'm not trained i'm not that good but i have an iphone and i have instagram yeah and so you know to travel i like to learn about first of all a cool destination to go to and then find the f- most fun route you know going to lufka colt last year mm-hmm. um we took the car trailered it to roswell so okay. i've already driven from so to back up i want to drive all 48 states in my 356 okay but i already driven from florida to texas so if, here i'm going and to la covered. yeah <laughs> i got that covered yeah. so 
in Roswell, I unhooked the car and I drove down the White Sands National Mine, which is unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh -huh. And from there, we drove north to Socorro, New Mexico, and drove Old Hi Highway 60, which is a two-lane oh, road. that's cool. Into Phoenix, and the very large array is like 27 major telescopes. And on, like, if it was, if I saw black and white, I feel like I'm in like a twilight zone. No, I yeah. don't imagine so in that area. And at other times, I felt like I was in that TV show Bonanza, <laughs> like with the, yeah. the tree, yeah, yeah, the I know pine trees, talking about. yeah, <laughs> and the scenery, you know, and and so you know, yeah, I'm going to LA, but I've done it on I-10, mm -hmm. so I want to drive like some cool scenery that we live in Florida. I mean, there's a couple cool roads, but they're mostly flat, and we don't have mountains. We have a yeah. couple hills exactly but, so you know just um want to take I, full advantage right yeah take you know just wanting to explore you know it's not you're not hunting for anything in particular but you want to like kind of learn about how the roads evolved and um i really wish there's a good website where you could take all the current roads the current highways off uh -huh. like maybe do it by decade like a, like a historic map yeah. almost yeah like you almost you'd have to go to uh, t to an antique store and buy that's copyrighted old. by the way <laughs> like we a, already got that yep, don't like even a, try it yep. we got that like a way back machine for maps yeah, yeah like that's I, mark mark's already got that in the works yep. that's his <laughs> Mark's maps <laughs> yeah like every summer you know for us in florida the qu a quick weekend getaway is like the Blue Ridge Mountains or the Smoky Mountains and the Bl BRP, which yeah. is the Blue Ridge Parkway for the people that don't live in the south. But it's just like a real controlled, nice, beautiful road and the climbs up and down mm -hmm. Mount Mitchell's, I think like 6,000 feet elevation, nowhere near, you know, like Colorado, Utah, Nevada yeah. or California. But still for us, it's it's fun. And in a 356, I've, I always say 80 feels like 100. Oh, know? so true. Sure. You know, it's yeah, so true. You don't have to be going. You don't need a car to go a hundred to feel like you're going a hundred. Yeah. Even like if you're in an old bus, like a oh, stock God, bus, yeah. like you feel going, like you're screaming, you're going 45 miles an hour. And you're yeah. like, I'm about to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With the safari windows exactly. wide open and oh, bugs yeah. hit bees flying into your face. So, yeah, that's awesome. You know, and, and not that I wish more people what I just I love everything that you're about as far as that like ethos that you have and like just trying to get out and be like involved in everything especially with so many things nowadays with people being trapped inside and with media and you know video games and all that kind of stuff you know you still are at the core doing these things and getting out there you know not that you're like some teenager or anything but I just mean as far as like trying to pass that on you have children of your own and like i like you and i have talked about this like you're passing on those core values with your kids you know you're spending time with them outside you guys go camping you're out by the campfire like you're teaching them those like awesome things the you race know? track yep. exactly yeah. leading have, by example i mean when nobody even if nobody was following you you're just doing your thing and then it naturally happens i i, I remember when my son was two my daughter was four or five mm -hmm. probably five driving them to Daytona for the roar, roar before the, the Rolex yeah. Yeah. in my bus. I would take one on Saturday, the other on Sunday. Uh -huh. And I had my son who's two, like <laughs> on my shoulders walking through the pits. Yeah. And, um, the Daytona newspaper took a picture of him and I in the garages walking through, which That's is cool. You know, yeah, That's really cool. Like the Rolex, you can walk through the garages, but this is a couple of weeks before in the practice. So like it's been ingrained in my children even though they live in Charleston now, but they're like, Hey, when can we go to a race with you? That's you know? cool. And, and like my son's like, I love orange. I want the orange bus. And my daughter's <laughs> like, well, I like turquoise. I want your 356. Yeah. Little that does, makes it easy. Yeah. But little does my son know that the Porsche is more valuable once he finds <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> he's going to be, like, be like, yeah, yeah. He's going to change his mind. Yeah, but I'm it's sure. just a joke with them. But I think it's good. Um, getting the kids interested and I have other friends that, um, bring their kids to the races and the roar before the rolex or like you guys had had on the last podcast hsr yeah, yeah. i go to three to five events uh, road atlanta sebring daytona uh what am i missing i think there's two in daytona two in yeah they get the midi right, right. so then. the midi's coming up yeah. and it's just so accessible you get to meet the owners of the cars and these cars are like badass historic oh, stuff yeah and and you develop these um, friendships with these people, and every time you go to a race, mm -hmm. they come by and say hi. Yep. 
they invite you to events. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I, I got invited a couple years ago to celebrate Brian Johnson's birthday, right? He's oh, the lead cool. singer of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. CDC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Jochen Moss is there. That's awesome. And <laughs> Jochen Moss, I pull up in my 356 and he comes over, you know, because not everybody there races Porsches. Uh -huh. We strike up a conversation. I tell him about how I grew up in Europe and uh -huh. I remember him racing in the 80s. And yeah. like he was just like another guy, but here he is, some famous race car driver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that might happen at like an IMSA race, mm -hmm. but it's definitely going to potentially happen at an HSR race. Oh, yeah. hands down. I agree with that. And and the cars um, just diverse from engine um, displacements and um, you can camp there, which mm -hmm. makes it easy. And most but of the people that own the race cars, they have RVs. So yep. they're there yep. cooking out and you get invited to. Yeah. And hang out and you get to really know who they are. Right. Exactly. Instead of like where as mark was indicating you know you go to an emsa race and if you've ever been to an emsa race you understand there's a lot of media there there's a lot of press there's a lot of vendors so there's a lot of pressure so like the drivers and the teams they're they're less there's barriers there yeah, you know and as he's describing at hsr mm -hmm. like we were preaching in the last podcast is those barriers don't exist at nope. those places and at those racetracks and if you really want to get intimate and you really want to maybe educate yourself and never been to one of these things and you're like man i'd love to see some vintage Porsches and I'd love to see some vintage race cars. Those are the races you need to go to. Yeah. It's more like a, a track day and you're just making new friends while you're at the track day, even though it's a race. That's, yeah. that's kind of the and scenario. And could be it is. friends with big name people exactly. because they're nice people and they just like to race. And if you're an enthusiast and they can spot you're an enthusiast, they're going to appreciate you just as much, you know, cause you have that common bond, you have that exactly. common ground. So yeah, I, I think it's awesome. Um, circling back to like, obviously you're not, I don't know if you do, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, but how many miles do you estimate you think you've probably put on your 356 since you've owned it? So I bought it in 98 and at that time I want to say it had 41,000 miles on the odometer. I don't know if that was 140 or 41,000. Yeah. The body was really, uh, in great shape. I stripped it to bare metal before I painted it this color. Uh -huh. I painted it silver for a year before that. Okay. And, um. I haven't calculated the last mileage, but it's somewhere around 280,000 miles that I've put on it over 21 years. And um, I mentioned earlier that I want to drive yeah. minimum the lower 48. And so on my way back from Rensport, I took um, Highway 50 from Tahoe through Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Canyon, Canyon City, and then I, I picked up seven more states, so I'm at 30 states out of the 48 wow. right now. Wow, doing pretty good. Yeah. I just want to, like, say that number again. 280,000, guys. I could that Mark's put on the car yeah. prior, you know, that's all his ownership. So I don't want to ever hear that I can't drive it. That's too far. That's the weather. I mean, that car's gone through everything. Like, if you've seen videos of it. Like it's been through mud, it's been through the beach, it's been through everything. Snow, yeah. and you know it's. And guess what? It's still here. It's still yep. here, and it's. <laughs> it's not it doesn't melt. It's not <laughs> always easy, you know. Uh, you're gonna have breakdowns. Uh, I had a car, a air cleaner fire, carburetor fire in a tunnel on the Angeles Crest Highway mm. in 2015 on the way to Rensport. And that sucked because it's not a good way to start the day. There's no cell phone reception. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you know, um, thanks to John Benton, we got it fixed. We pulled an all-nighter and got it back on the road. And I made it about 24 hours after the guys that I was cruising up with. And it's people like that. Uh, you know, there's and John's one of many in the Porsche family that will help you out. Um, I had a similar issue. It's not similar, but. Um, on the way to Lufka Colt last April, I stopped by to see um, Jack Staggs and Trevor Gates in San Clemente. Jack's been in business, I think, 48 years, specifically with the 356. Yeah. So, you know, we've been friends for years online, mm -hmm. but, you you know, you'd want to meet somebody. So Absolutely. I'm, I'm rolling to L.A., and we, uh, I can't remember exactly why. There was some issue with my car, and then... Um, Oh, something got caught in like a jet, so it wasn't mm -hmm. running right. Okay. We, he looked at it, fixed it, and then he's like, "I'm going to take it for a test drive." And he's like, "Holy cow, your brakes suck! You're <laughs> not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere until we fix this." 
He's so, like, wait a minute, you drove this over here? And you yeah. would know because they just feel like normal. You're normal, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I've never like I've I've never had like perfect brakes, but now I do. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's again people like Jack Stags, John Benton, Rod Emery's helped me out in the past on the way to Luft Three. You know, yeah, like, that's blow, so awesome. Blowing oil out of my um, my valve cover gaskets. Mm-hmm. For years, this engine had a plug where the breather is and the oil filler can. And Rod's like, w- "What is this here for?" I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know any better. Like, <laughs> I don't have. I don't it's have there. Yeah, somebody yeah. put it there. I didn't put it there." And I'm like, "You're like, I'm not you, so I don't know." <laughs> yeah, like, I don't. I don't have a Rod Emery or a yeah. John Benton. Breaks or out a book. He's like, exactly. "Well, according to page 37, no." <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the generosity of these guys with the enthusiasts—they're um, willing to help, and I think. The Volkswagen community is similar, mm-hmm. um, but the Porsche family, I think, it seems to me it's just expanded and it's grown. And if I took Instagram out of my life right now, I would probably have half the knowledge I do or half the friends that I do. Be- and when I travel, uh-huh. it's nice to stop by and see somebody. Absolutely. And so yeah. on the way back from Rensport, I stu- you know, Matt Hummel invited me up. Uh huh. Stayed at his house. That's cool. Which was awesome. You and Hummel are like yeah. probably peas in a pod. I've never met Matt, but like obviously you guys are on the same wavelength of like the way you do things. Totally. And he, I, I, I was blown away. His property is really cool. And um, <laughs> his it's secluded but it's not far from auburn california which is kind of gold mining territory and it's his driveway is so steep and rocky i'm like spinning tires trying to get up and <laughs> you know my engine is yeah. over the gearbox yeah and the axle. Axle drive. yeah yeah and uh anyways he's got like some serious cars and getting to know him better as opposed to online friends was really interesting and and you know you you have all these mutual friends and he's telling me about his trip to Europe last summer and getting invited into the Porsche archives and researching. He has a real, that's really cool. He has a really early, I think it's a 51 or 52. I don't know if it's a Cabriolet. It's a convertible. Uh Uh-huh. Looks, I call it the trilobite. It's got this, um, (laughs) aluminum tonneau (laughs) with louvers on it. (laughs) So I'm in Moab. It makes sense then why he call it that. (laughs) So I'm in Moab on the way home and, there's the rock shop and i stop in there because it's famous i uh-huh. want to get a picture with it and they have these trilobite fossils so i take a picture and i text it to matt <laughs> yeah. like this is your card you're like before. hey just found it <laughs> is this where you got inspiration from <laughs> right. so, so just bringing it back you know and part of the traveling and the people you meet technology has really shrunk the globe mm-hmm. and uh the ability to meet new friends and just like your podcast right you're sharing other people's stories with people around the globe you know i listen uh-huh. every week and you know you're counting off the countries that you're at, at you know yeah. on or, or viewers or li- listeners uh-huh. and it's really um, amazing that <laughs> she's in the video she doesn't even realize it <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> hey sharon <laughs> so yeah i mean i totally agree with you like technology has shrunk the globe and it's awesome too because for such a long time, there was a stereotype and a moniker, especially surrounding Porsche, right? Mm-hmm. Like, their guys are pricks. They don't talk to anybody. They don't, you know, and I the, think... The Porsche weenie. Exactly, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, the pricks are on the outside yeah. of the car and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think for people maybe that may be listening that are on the fence of maybe getting into Porsche, you know, Mark's talking about things that are very true. And I know you guys have heard us say it, but you're hearing it from other people saying it. It's the community is very tight. You know, all you got to do is get out and get into it. Kind of like Mark is like, it's easy to stay at home and not get out and do anything. But you've heard the breakdowns. You've heard the stories. that, And, and, and where I'm leading with this is that hasn't prevented you from wanting to go out, right? Your breakdowns. You don't, you don't develop a fear now of, oh, my God, hmm. my transmission may fall out on my way to California. Well, if it does, we'll deal with it, right? Is right. that the attitude behind it? Absolutely. And I, I tell a lot of people this especially maybe somebody new that has a vintage car you have a cell phone right you got get triple a premiere you get a 200 mile tow exactly. two 100 mile toes and a 50 mm-hmm. and if you don't know somebody within 200 miles of where you're at you probably know if somebody who does exactly and it gives you the confidence that you know if 
something does happen, at least I can get it to a city and if I have to go home with my tail between my legs and put it on a U-Haul and drive home and miss the event, so be it. Yep. But it's in the face of adversity when you have that carburetor fire on the crest highway. Yep. Pushing through and never giving up. And that's so cliche, never giving up. But if you want something bad enough, you're going to make it happen. Yeah. And to me, the memory, every a lot of times when I travel, it's usually to an event. It could be an HSR race. It could be Lufka Colt. It could be Ren Sport. I've yeah. done or Tampa, right? Or, you or don't Tampa here. here. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've done four or six rent sports with my car Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's not always easy and it costs money and you have to make sacrifices. But the memories and the people you meet and the the trip there, the journey is um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. You know, and I always talk about, you know, if I didn't have to work, what would I be doing with my time? And it would. Same thing. Yeah. That's expensive. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. Driving and going to that antique store, buying that old road map <laughs> yeah. and driving those and finding out what the towns and, are yeah. about. And I think, you know, not that anybody wants anything to go wrong, but I think obviously, like Mark said, in the face of adversity, those are going to leave memorable stamps inside your memory, right? As far as having an uneventful, let's just say you go to California and nothing happens, but not that not you want something to happen, but you'll see things along the way. You'll take great pictures and you'll do that. And then 10 years will pass and then you can compare that to a trip that maybe you went across the country and then you cracked a windshield and then it started raining and you had to get another windshield and then the, the the transmission fell apart and then you had to rebuild it on the side of the road and then you had to camp at this one. You're going to remember that trip 10 times more than the other trip and not saying that you want to be in pain, but it just adds more substance to the memory, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and having the right attitude to be like, okay, what are my options, A, B, C, what's you know what can i accomplish how can i get there mm-hmm. uh, maybe i have to tow it a few miles to somebody's shop and and they help me out or you know and and to everybody listening if you're ever in north florida and you need help i've got space yeah and you know you're more than welcome to call me up and i think the whole porsche community has evolved ever since really seems to me like instagram was kind of in the timeline of the Porsche community, you look at what Ray Schaefer's doing with the heritage yeah. display at Porsche experience center. Like he is sharing what's going on there mm-hmm. where without Instagram, we wouldn't know. Wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't Absolutely. Know you happen to be going I totally like agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Like, and, and it goes back to what Mark was saying earlier, where you can have a global reach, especially with Instagram or podcasting or YouTube or whatever it is that you're shrinking the globe because you're bringing those people that maybe that are out on an island mm-hmm. by themselves and they don't have any Porsche buddies or they don't have any other, but they are a Porsche person. And they're like, well, hey, I'm out here by myself in Finland and I love Porsches and I love VWs. And you guys are the ones that are keeping me going and hearing your stories gives me strength to go on my own adventures. Well, you look yeah. at, right, Florida, Sebring, Daytona, Brumos, Champion Porsche. So there's a lot of Porsches here. California, huge market. Mm-hmm. You look at a guy like Chris Kluwell yep. in Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. Right? He He's not isolated by any means. I'm sure there's Porsches up there. Chris Rungi lives up there. Yep. But, you know, this guy connects through stories he writes, or, um, uh, films that he does. Exactly. And he... That's and he's an adventurer too. He likes to get out adventurer. there. Yeah, he loves getting out there. And that's what I love about Chris. Chris and I talk offline a lot. And um, that, you know, all you guys all share a lot of that, you know. And I think a lot of the people within our core group share those same qualities too, because we're those guys that, granted, you know, we might be traveling to like the things that Mark indicated at the Rolex or DRT in Miami, but we're still driving four or five hours across the state. We're still making that drive. I mean, not saying that oh we're we're better than anybody else out there that who's not doing that but i'm just saying that's a common occurrence i mean you're doing that every what at least month you're probably going on 12 trips just within the state of florida across the state back and forth you know not even putting in those longer trips that you're taking somewhere so i mean that's that's just commonplace like oh i'm gonna go if i'm gonna go to the rolex it's not even a question of course i'm gonna drive my car Right. And people are like, oh, you drive your car here? Oh, you drive your car to Miami? I'm like, well, how else would I get here? <laughs> Not a trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, um, do, am I just going to ride in another Porsche with somebody? I have one. Why wouldn't I drive mine? Right. 
And everybody's like, oh, wow, I just, I don't know. I guess I figured you would just trailer it. You're like, why would you drive five hours in Miami in your car? And I'm like, yeah, and, why and, would I not? And, and yeah. you know, you, you look at Lufka Colt and how it's evolved. And then Das Rentreffen in Miami, also known as DRT. And the, both communities are similar. Uh, it's the same community, but both events are very similar, yet a little bit different. But they, it, what it does, it's more um, inclusive as opposed to exclusive. Mm -hmm. So they're inviting people in. Um, I say there's a huge demand at Lufka Colt now. You know, they can only oh, yeah. hold so many people yeah. due to, I guess, fire. Yeah, they're just busted stuff. at the seams at this point just because of the level of interest, right? Yeah, which, I mean, if I worked for Porsche... I'm like well, writing on the wall. Yeah. Like, Figure it out. How do I not get behind some, are, doing something this like we this are killing, the, uh, you know, like it's awesome. We are like ruling the vintage car world and with events like rent sport that they do every few years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's like a reunion. It's, it's insane. A rent sport yeah. reunion, but yeah. it's a homecoming. For it is everybody. absolutely right. And, and, and it's one, it's, it's their super bowl, right? Like it's their big event. And, Anybody who missed the last one, I, we said it in many podcasts, you have to go to them. You have to go, go to, to that event Porsche because you, event. you're missing out. You know, we're not talking about static displays. I mean, there's race cars running. Like, how many times are you ever going to see Kramer cars running in competition on the track against each other? How many times are you going to see 917s running against each other? Yeah. Unless you were alive during that time frame when that was happening, that's not happening anywhere else other than those events. And great for you if you got to see it when it was originally happening yeah but i mean rent sport is the next best thing were you guys there the yeah last one. do yeah. you remember the rothman's car going around the track and he'd get off in the dirt oh yeah it's like the yeah the wheel one yeah he yeah. was yeah he was doing he was doing the, the safari the mode on purpose yeah yeah like totally going off track and climbing that one hill yeah in the dirt and then he'd get back on track and and not even that but i was surprised um the friday night there was a concert like mm -hmm. they didn't promote this that I ever heard. Oh yeah, I was. Yeah. We yeah, were there for that too. That was yeah. insane, wasn't yeah. it? So, so you had. Um, Perry, and that was a little Easter Perry, egg that we didn't even know it was going to happen. Yeah. Perry Farrell from Jane's Addiction is on stage. Bob Weir from The Dead. Who else was there? That Seal guy. Oh was yeah, he was the there. Yeah, he was singing, and uh, there was somebody else. But that was a total surprise that Porsche brought all these famous musicians uh, to put on a concert and you're like right next to these famous race car yeah. drivers from back in the day they're like in the yeah. vip thing and you're right Derek bell's like hanging out right there i remember that and like yeah. right next to us and it's like yeah, dude is probably, this really happening there was probably only like a couple hundred people yeah. at the concert but well it's because you were just hanging back and that's in the it was in the middle area and, and everybody was just kind of hanging talking all of a sudden a concert started to happen yeah i was blown away i was, I was like, too we were, we were camping at the track and my friend at camp with um, Adam McQuiston, he's like, hey, where are you at? I'm, like, doing all this um, with Chad and Robert, Chad Not Gill. Uh -huh. We're shooting all the, uh, this footage with um, GoPro and selfie sticks on the Bixby Bridge, which is one of my favorite yeah. spots to visit. And we That's spent, a cool bridge. Dude, we spent, like, three hours. I'm like, Chad, here's the keys. Go take my 356 buzz up and down mm -hmm. Highway 1. and. And then um, Adam called. He said, "Hey man, when are you coming? Because there's a show tonight." I'm like, "Oh yeah, who's playing?" And he told me. I was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, like what? <laughs> but you're uh, like, "Do you have to pay to go to that thing?" They're like, "No, it's just there." Yeah, and I'm like, I, "Okay." I think people that weren't camping at the track may not have even known. I didn't see a flyer event. No, I didn't. Event. We didn't know it either. We just ha we were there when it was happening. Like we just had been hanging out all day, and we weren't going anywhere. And then that happened, and we we're like, "Okay, we're staying." So yeah, I mean, it's just in. You know, where we're going and tying all this into, guys, is basically family, like the Porsche family. And what and what, the, what we're saying about that is is there's not very many brands that exist where or many marks out there where you can go to one of these histor you know, historical events, see race cars, meet people, hang out with people, or drive to the, to the event across the country, bond with people along the way, bond with people on the way back. I mean, you yeah. name another one that somebody's going to – greet you with open arms like that and i, I know, know we're we're yeah. fanboying because we're a porsche podcast but seriously i mean i don't know another one i mean i'm a car guy by nature and i know a lot of marks i just don't know anybody who's doing stuff like that no nope, not that's but not not that it's public at all i mean and we have the history behind it too so we have to remember keep remembering that just because we're and we're and i think that's it's being accepted and really 
uh, relived with those deliveries, like the Pink Pig and the Rothmans coming out, the, all those things. Porsche's getting into it somewhat. Mm-hmm. And, and and then, like we said earlier, the 911 and the 912 car in Amazon oh, yeah, right Brumos. now. The yeah. Brumos oh, livery. Oh, golly. Yeah. The 59s. Amazing. I mean, God, that was so cool that they did that. And how cool would it be for them to do, like, a Vasha Polet yeah. thing? For, That'd be like, really cool. For, race out on the West Coast. That'd be really cool. You know, Absolutely. It ties in the, the present and the past. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we we got the hats and the lanyards with the yeah. 59 blue on the bottom, red on the top. And everyone's like, well, where'd you get one of those? Yeah. I was like, I was just lucky enough. Someone from yeah. Porsche Motorsport came up yeah. and gave it You got to be there, guys. You got to be there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. You got to be at those things. And it's just even more encouragement to be there in a, in a sense, in an indirect way. You know, maybe that's what they're, those race teams are saying. Hey. You want the stuff, you got to be here. We just give it away. We're not selling it. You know, you just have to be here. But um, circling back to a little bit about your car and the things that you do and with that car, do you keep a journal or, like, I know you said you wanted to do a certain amount of states. Do you have a plan of what you do or is it just kind of a feeling and, like, where you say, I'm going to go take off and I'm going to head to Tennessee because I haven't seen this part of Tennessee before and you just go or or is it actually calculated? How do you do that? Well, if there's not... You know, if there's an event like L- Luft or Rentsport or like the Midi in Atlanta, then obviously I'm going to do that. But then there's a lot of times, especially in the summer, that I'll do regional trips. My sister just moved from Santa Cruz to Asheville, so now I have a reason to spend oh, nice. more time up there. Mm-hmm. And um, I would say most of my trips that I've done are probably based around events, but not necessarily and the states I have left are all like Canadian border states pretty much. Okay. And so that's like summer road trip for me because I'm like over the heat right now. <laughs> it's a little warm. Yeah, you and us and, both. Yeah, man. I mean, we have nine months of summer here. And we <laughs> Literally. Call it, we call it this. Um, and like one fall and then summer again, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so not having air conditioning. Yeah. Is that me? No, I think okay. you're fine. All right. Um, Alan Wiener is the president of our Florida 356 group, and I'd never heard this term before, but he calls it swamp ass season. Because <laughs> yeah. your back sweat rolls down. It's a, your yeah. ass. Yeah, yeah, I've heard swamp ass before. Yeah. Yep. He's from New York, so yeah. uh, he retired it's down like here. constant swamp ass, man. Yeah, but like you, you look at summertime, the, the best roads are at either high elevations in the south uh-huh. or like north of the Mason-Dixon line. Yeah, true story. And, uh, you know... T- so you're gonna start trying to make an effort to get out of the heat and go go further north during those summer months, huh? Yeah. So um, I heard that the Emory camp out is gonna be in. There's gonna be one in I think July 2020. So I'm like, sweet, that's in Oregon, McMinnville, Oregon. Aaron and I talked about wanting to go to that too. Yeah. Drive to it. That's yeah. what I want. I'm like talking to a friend in Miami. I'm like. God, we could drive up kind of diagonal to. I'll go I've, with you. I've let's been go. To Michigan, so let's like do it, pick man. up Wisconsin and then drive all those. Let's take the time there. off and let's go. Let's yeah. do it. We, we'll go with you if we drive and we don't have to leave the cars there and ship them back or fly back out another time a few months later and then drive. I'm, yeah, I've been fortunate to do that where I'll leave my car at my sister's place for five months in Santa Cruz or, you know, I left it in San Clemente with Jack Stacks for seven uh-huh. months and you know it's uh, there's this guy named uh john harvey met him in charleston at one of the 356 registry holidays this okay. guy helped build the hubble space telescope <laughs> wow but uh, no big deal yeah yeah this guy is awesome he has a 64 356 and when i met him i'm like you're my hero dude. yeah he is driven. i want to be you <laughs> yeah. i didn't even know him we were at the bar and I, he just came up and started talking and uh, he's driven his 356 to every state capital in the lower 48 and has a photo. Of that's his cool. Car. Oh, that's, yeah. that's really cool. But so the first time I, I was like, well, how do you afford the time to do this? I mean, yeah. when you were working, you're retired now. But he's like, well, what I'll do is like I'll go to an East Coast or West Coast holiday and I have friends all over the country. So I'll drive to whatever state like Iowa and mm-hmm. then I'll stay and hang with my friends for a little bit and then I'll fly home. Ah. And then a few days before the event, I'll fly back out. Okay. And then he'll finish the trip or whatever. You know. Okay. Yeah. So, so it'll break up the time. Yeah. So it's just not totally consumed. Right. So, and he's got multiple 356s. So he's still got something at home that's fun to drive. Yeah. But, um, it makes sense if you can be away from your car that long. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. tough. 
I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, can you can you can you stomach it <laughs> to be away that long? You're like, no. I mean, you, like I left it twice in California, and, and between the wildfires and earthquakes, I'm like, oh yeah, that would be a little <laughs> oh, my baby. Cringy. Yeah, I'm like, it was under a, a tree on my sister's farm, and. I drive in the Lufka Colt, and there's like leaf prints. It looked like it came out of a barn, but there's mice, field mice <laughs> inside the car when I went hey, to get it. Hey, who are you? Yeah. yeah. My home. Yeah. Like Hummel was like, when I told him I was going out to get it in Santa Cruz and drive to L.A., he's like, just make sure you check your wiring because mice like to eat wires. Oh, and man. And send at, at, don't yeah. ask me how I know. Yeah. And so I had like spare carburetors in this foam square box like Weber's yeah and I opened it up and I had like I like to have like vintage flannel blankets in the back covering all my tools yeah. and parts and I opened the lid and there is parts of this flannel blanket in a nice little <laughs> nest inside my carburetor box which they were spare carbs but yeah still I'm like there's the mice he was yeah. talking about you're like oh he decided to make a home inside <laughs> of here <Yeah>. nice <laughs> good choice in carburetors but yeah. not mine thank you yeah. yeah that's crazy man yeah don't, yeah don't don't mess with my carburetors nice well let's talk about a little bit why you're in tampa here um yeah. you're here for a documentary that was done by uh the heart media group and a uh, brandon very talented young man who's getting his start and um how did all that come about let's talk about that a little bit how did how did that even you know come to fruition shout out to brandon he's sitting right next yeah, to us yeah brandon hey man thank you uh so so um, Amelia Island, um, there's a gentleman who has a, a party in a hangar, mm -hmm. and he owns several vintage and exotic cars. His son has two really close friends. Okay. And one of them is Brandon's father. The other one is Ramsey Potts. And then there's Bill's son. Okay. Anyway, so... Um, Dennis and Brandon were talking about project, you know, he's super talented uh -huh. about creating a film company. Okay. Videography, whatever you want to phrase it. Yeah. But um, they went to Ramsey. Ramsey works for RM Sotheby's, so he has a lot of connections. Okay. And he's just the original one. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a good nickname for, for him because he's <laughs> given me a, a really good one. But um, so they went to Ramsey and they said, Ramsey, we want to launch this new company. Mm -hmm. Brandon wants to focus on cars. Okay. And they need somebody that has an interesting story to tell. Okay. So Ramsey said, well, have you heard of Mark Probanic? And I said, or they said, well, I knew Dennis from the hangar party. I've probably known Dennis Harton for three or four years. Uh -huh. And so I um, can't remember if it was Ramsey or Dennis text me. And we got connected and um, kind of they gave me the background of kind of what where they're wanting to go in the future with this company, Heart and Media Group. Mm -hmm. And um, turns out that they were going to be in Miami for Das Rentreffen. Okay. So well, that worked. So we hooked up there. He did drone footage and, you know, got to meet a lot of really cool people. Yeah. And um, they followed us uh, back from Miami to Je Neptune Beach where I live. And they stayed at my house. And... Um, we did uh, basically two and a half days worth of filming, and I took them to all like my favorite roads and spots that were scenic for Florida. Again, we're not in Colorado, we're not yeah. Utah, California. So kind of like if you were have a friend, let's say you have a friend that you want to, you know, it's kind of like when a friend comes into town, you take them to your favorite restaurant. Absolutely, all the spots, yeah, the like, good hey, spots, right? You know, here, 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 here. And yeah. a lot of people don't even know the places that I've been to that live there, like. The, <laughs> Because the they don't get road. out, right? They don't yeah. know. They don't explore. And so I was like, you know, when you're driving your car and you're like, man, this would be a really cool shot with a drone. Mm -hmm. Well, Brandon's got a drone and he's yeah. like super talented. Well, I know yeah. a guy. Yeah. And so, you know, we did all this, this footage. And I will say one of the things, um, you know, I've only known Brandon a couple months now, but one thing that s sets him apart from others is that he loves the editing aspect and when you're doing two and a half days of filming and hours and that's yeah. hours and hours yeah. and hours and that's audio. tedious work man and when you get somebody who loves it yeah that's you know that's kind of like the worst part for most people is like oh my god how do yeah. i sift through all this footage exactly and make a good story out of it and and he, 
he, that's something he's really good at yeah. and really likes to do. And I think that's going to, you know, propel him yeah. to where he wants to be. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. You know, we were here, we were at the launch party and they got to share that with a, with a good group of people that were here, uh, a lot of Porsche enthusiasts. And uh, we're really excited for Brandon moving forward. And it was top notch. Um, you guys need to check it out on YouTube, Heart Media Group, um, the Perbanic video. Brandon, what's the title of the video? It's about the patina. Check it out. Type it in the search bar. Go check it out. Give him a follow. Give him a you know a like. Um, subscribe to the channel. He's got a lot more stuff coming up. This is just like the tipping point where he's just getting started. So there's going to be a lot more coming forward from Brandon. So we look forward to that as a group. Um, help support this guy. He's uh, definitely a Porsche guy, and he's he's totally into it. And he's he's putting everything he's got into it. And you guys should uh, give him you know your support as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything else, Aaron, that you want to cover before we take off? I don't think so. I think pretty much covered all the history. I don't have any, any questions I had. Yeah. I was going to ask if you got to do any Porsche stuff when you were back in the Netherlands growing up. Did you get to go to Germany and see Stuttgart back then? or? You know, I, I did the, the BMW mm -hmm. Museum in, I think it's in Munich, and mm -hmm. then the it Mercedes. And Stuttgart, which is. But not, I'd never. Well, the museum probably wouldn't have, no. wouldn't have existed until 05. No. And my dad's, um, although. I, I, at that time, he worked for Borg Warner Chemicals. He transferred to Borg, War Borg Warner Automotive, but he's not really a car guy. He likes like when we we moved back to America. He drove Oldsmobiles and Buicks. In Europe, his well, company that's, car that's, was a five series BMW in the seventies. I can that's, see the appeal. That's though. pretty cool. I mean, because yeah. he he's going oh well now I get to do the American stuff, which was rare over there, and then yeah. Yeah, and so unfortunately, no. I, like I don't even remember seeing a whole lot of Porsches even in the Netherlands or Germany. Remember, lots of Mercedes, lots of BMWs, and of course, like the big diesel um, tour buses. And yeah, stuff. those are those things are everywhere for the transportation. But I, you know, one of my, I don't know if this is a short, probably a more midterm goal for me is to ship my car to Europe yeah. and spend an entire summer. That would be awesome. Traveling all over Europe. I think everybody listening wants to do that, too. Yeah, I think, I think uh, I've heard that a couple of times. Around. Yeah. Just, just, just around in this conversation today, I've heard a couple of times. Yeah, uh, you know, it just, and to make the connections, you know, like the Le Mans Classic. I would totally yeah. want to do the Le yeah, Mans that, Classic. Yeah, how awesome would that I'd be? I'd want to visit Stuttgart, yep. mm -hmm. Vysok, yep. um, and then, you know, some other countries that I've, it's been maybe Start 20 knocking years. Off those, those countries and states. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So uh, one other question I had. So out of all this 280,000 traveled miles, mm -hmm. what's one of those, what's the, the most uh, stuck out memory to you or the, the one that's really been the thing that you think of? I've been exploring, I've been traveling these states, and this story just hits you, and, and that's what's, what's well, made it for you, like that, that go-to story or just thing that it automatically comes up from exploring. Well, I, you know, there's good stories. Oh, what's a good and story? Tell us a good story. Yeah, we heard yeah, that. We heard Catching on Fire, fire in a yeah. Tunnel. So. I, I think um, going to Luft last year, Highway 60 and Highway 50, the loneliest road in America. That, to me, those roads, um, you know, are just stuff you don't see here. Mm -hmm. And it's like that movie Cars, right? Yeah. So when my kids were young, my son loved that movie radiator mm -hmm. springs yep. yeah radiator springs was the town forgotten when they built the interstate true story and you know you you drive through these little towns that ha still have motor lodges with neon signs That's and crazy cool antique stores and you know to, to me like the trip back i would say probably most recently this last fall uh, from Rensport back home to florida was about 4300 miles and um you know, going up the Monarch Pass. I didn't even know I was climbing the Monarch Pass. There was no signs till I got to the top. I'm like 11,000 feet up. <laughs> Look what <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, it's raining. It's almost snowing. And You're it's like, like, it, egg? It's like late September, early October. And I, being carbureted, I, and I see the sign at the summit. And I'm like, oh, I got to get a picture of that. I get out of the car, and the car just stalls because there's <laughs> that air fuel <laughs> mixture. Yeah, it's, it's not, not happy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm wearing not. shorts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're ready. They're like, Florida boy, what are you doing? Yeah, so I would have to say just that, that trip right there. And, you know, there, the film that Brandon did, 
it's about the patina. The patina is because it's driven. Mm -hmm. The paint job's only 19 years old. People think it's original paint. I'm yeah. like, no, I just drive the shit out of it. Exactly. And so should you. Exactly. And, and you wait know, a minute, you're from Florida. You, what the hell are you doing here, boy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so t to me, if, if there's one thing somebody could hopefully get out of that film or even what I do mm -hmm. and the ethos of how I live my life is that just get out and explore yeah and and like i said visit those small towns that may need your money there may be a cool That's airbnb true. good point good you know, point there could be some good restaurants you and know. there could be an old porsche dude hiding in that town too right oh my god yeah, you barn know. find you never know you never know you look at what tom cotter's doing with his barn finds thing on exactly Hagerty. like i love watching him and he's just like a personable guy you know mm -hmm. just being respectful to people and their property and rolling up on someone's property and like yeah. hey you know what's going on with this car what can you tell yeah. me about that and you know, you know just trying to tell the story right yeah right. and and making your own memories and you know you're going to meet people along the way mm -hmm. you're going to have some hurdles to overcome but don't give up and you know don't have the confidence don't be afraid you know it's yeah. it's a car if it it's breaks doable. down yeah you know you're gonna get it fixed exactly good you point know, Mile, prepared. the miles don't matter the memories do yeah, yeah. That's, that's where it's at yeah well we'd like to thank you mark for your time i mean we you know you were here for multiple purposes and you know we've known each other for quite some time now through vws and stuff like that and thank you for your time um I want to remind everybody, you know, this is still going to be on Stitcher and all those things that, but we have recently starting putting stuff on YouTube. Um, this video should be on YouTube if you're listening on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all those things. But if you want to watch at home and see how goofy we look, you know, and or at watch, work. yeah, 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 and watch us, you know, drink some bourbon and you know play around here, that you can do that. I know there's a lot of people who like to do that for whatever reason, and you guys wanted it, so we're putting it out there. But um. Thanks again, Mark, and uh, we appreciate your time. You um, again, go check out the Hard Media Group. Uh, they're on YouTube. Support these guys. Um, they're kicking some serious ass, and they got a lot of good projects moving forward. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thanks. Yep. See you Thank guys. You. All right, bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of PCAR Talk. Connect with us on Instagram at PCAR Talk or online at PCARTalk.com.